and welcome to another Wednesday Weekly. My name is Jordan. I am one of the co-hosts today. I am with International Enrollment. My role here at Lakehead is the International New and Social Media Officer, so I help run live events. Uh, today we're joined by undergraduate, graduate admissions teams, as well as a few folks from International to answer plenty of questions related to um, the upcoming cycle, the upcoming semester. Um, but before we dive into the Wednesday Weekly itself, I would like to chat about the Lakehead International Live Series. So earlier this week on Monday, we uh, actually had Natalie, uh, the undergraduate admissions officer, who's joined us today. She joined us on Monday as well, and we walked through applying to an undergraduate program at Lakehead University. Um, and that was a very great informational webinar. It's up on our YouTube channel already. If you're uh, one of those students that still needs to apply, um, I certainly encourage you to check out that webinar and get the step-by-step -step to applying. Um, we also met up with Carla on Instagram Live yesterday. She is a current student studying chemistry on the Thunder Bay campus from Mexico. Um, so we dove into her journey. And then upcoming, so tomorrow we'll be meeting Vishwa, who is a business student on the Thunder Bay campus from India. And then this Friday we're going to meet up with um, the faculty or the department, pardon me, of mathematical science. And last but not least, next week, to start off the week strong, we'll be meeting up with Nancy Cahill, the manager of Student Accessibility Services. Without further ado, though, we'll dive into um, today's content, Wednesday Weekly. So things to remember throughout today's webinar. Of course, if you uh, do have questions or if one of our uh, co-hosts encourages you to send them an email directly, um, you can use one of the three emails listed on the screen. So if Natalie in undergraduate admissions asks you to connect with her via email, her email is intl.admission at lakehead.ca. If Sharice asks you to connect with the graduate studies team, you can use gstudent at lakehead.ca. Um, if either myself, Robert, or Patrick um, request that you connect directly with international enrollment, you can use the email at the very bottom of the screen, welcome at lakehead.ca. If you do have questions today, we encourage you to certainly submit them live, uh, live using the Q&A function. If you're watching on Zoom, you can do that now. If you're watching over on our Facebook live stream, you can always comment on that video and our experts behind the scenes will be answering questions on there. If this is a recording, so whether it's the recording of our live on uh, Instagram or it's on YouTube, you can still comment on that video as well. We will receive that notification and we'll certainly get back to you. And last but not least, I'd like to remind everyone to stay connected with us on social media. If you head over to either Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, those in China using Weibo, WeChat, or Yoku, you can stay connected with us, follow us on those channels, uh, receive important updates, learn more about the university, learn more about opportunities similar to this. And I guess I should mention last but not least, there is a link at the bottom of your screen as well, the lakehead.ca forward slash about forward slash coronavirus. So that is our page um, with plenty of frequently asked questions for the upcoming cycle. So they're specific to graduate studies, specific to academics, specific to international students. There's a, a, a major amount of questions now. We recently updated them and we're really proud of the, the updates that we've made here and we continue to update them regularly. So I certainly encourage you, if you haven't already, to go check that out. Without further ado though, I will head over to the Q&As and we'll start answering some questions. So the first question we have is from the Sarge. Uh, they have made the $400 confirmation deposit on May 28th, but they have not received the payment receipt. Uh, they're curious if there's any delays right now. So if you do require a receipt for your confirmation deposit, you actually need to connect directly with our international accounts officer, uh, who is Chris Gallinger. Um, I can get Patrick Carr to put his email in the Zoom chat right now, um, and you can reach out directly to Chris and request that receipt for payment. Um, you can also check out your MyInfo account, and if you head over to your student accounts, any payments that have been applied will show up directly in there as well. Um, it depends if you need a formal receipt or if uh, simply showing that the charge has been applied towards your account uh, is required. So the next question we have, and this one will go for to Robert, um, it is, I have heard that it is necessary to get a visa before starting online studies. Is that true? So I'll pass it over to Robert to answer that one. Great. Thanks so much, Jordan. Um, so I, 
I, it's hard to tell. So in this particular question, it's not clear whether or not um, this prospective student is a graduate student or an undergraduate student. And I think the answer kind of depends a little bit between the between both. To be brutally honest, you do not have to have a study permit to start your studies online this fall. So that has been made clear by the government. They have clarified that if your study permit is delayed um, and you do not have it in hand, or even not the physical permit, but you haven't been approved for a permit yet, um, you certainly can still start your studies online in the fall. The piece though that this does impact, and it's important for everyone to be aware is, is as it relates to the amount of time that you're studying and how that impacts your eligibility to be considered for a postgraduate work permit. So many of you um, obviously are coming to Canada to earn your, your degrees in either undergraduate or master's level degrees, perhaps even PhD for some of you. And one of your goals potentially, and I suspect for many of you, is the, the, the goal and the dream to earn a postgraduate work permit so that when you finish your studies, you will have the opportunity to stay in Canada afterwards and start your careers and to start working and, and live for a period of time in Canada. Now, what the government has provided clarification on uh, a few weeks ago is that if a student has a study permit or has been approved for a study permit by the time they start their classes this fall, if they are studying online at a distance, so they're not physically in Canada, the government will count the time that you're studying for the fall semester. So until December 31st, 2020, they will count that period of time towards the eligibility criteria for the postgraduate work permit. So that's really positive, right? So if you've received your approval for your study permit, you can feel very confident to start your, your program this fall and know that that period of time for the fall so far um, will be counted towards um, eligibility towards the postgraduate work permit. If a student does not have a study permit, so they have not yet received a permit or they have not yet received approval for a study permit, the government has said that that period of time that you're studying online does not count towards the postgraduate work permit criteria. Now, if you're in an undergraduate program that's typically four years in length, that's not a big deal because as long as you study for at least two years full time in, in your program, then that would bring you to the maximum amount of time to be eligible towards that postgraduate work permit. If you study less than two years, there is the possibility that that postgraduate work permit may be reduced slightly. The timing may be reduced slightly. We call it prorated. So it might be reduced slightly um, for that amount of time. Now, that is the current statement. <laughs> if you had asked us four weeks ago, what was the statement? It was different. If you'd asked us eight weeks ago, it was different. So things are constantly evolving. And what we have seen demonstrated by the Canadian government is that as these issues are arising and as universities, um, student unions, other groups are, are advocating on behalf of our international students, we are seeing the government make positive steps towards you know, addressing those concerns. And, and you know, at the end of the day the government of Canada recognizes the value that international students play not only to the country our economy to our learning environments the diversity of our country but also recognizes that for many of you your long-term goal may be one day to become a Canadian you know and to join our our country and and they have identified that uh, a pathway for immigration is actually through education. And so my, my suspicion um, is that we may continue to see positive developments. But again, you need to know where we stand today. And today where it stands is if you have approval for your study permit or have received your study permit, by the time you start your classes this fall, the fall semester of online study will count towards the, the, your learning time that the government calculates um, towards your program, towards a postgraduate work uh, permit. If you do not yet have a visa um, by the time the fall semester starts, they have said that that time will not count. So um, it's up to you to make obviously a decision that best fits your particular scenario and your situation, but that is what we know today. We continue to advocate with the government. We continue to reach out on behalf of students to make sure that you know all of you can continue with your plans for this fall, and to do so with the confidence that you know your dreams and your your goals and what you're planning to do with your future, you can achieve those as best as possible. So that's where we stand today. And like I said, hopefully in the coming weeks and months, um, we will continue to see positive developments on this front. 
Awesome, thank you so much for that, Robert. So the next question I have is with regards to residents, and I'll try and uh, take a stab at this one, but if anyone on uh, my panel here wants to also add on, I encourage you to do so. So the question is, I have applied to residents. I'm not sure if I will make it for the official move-in date uh, in September. Will I, uh, can my room be saved for if I come in October or November? So that's something that I would certainly encourage you to connect with our residents team directly with. Um, given the new policies and procedures that they're putting in place to make sure that they can properly assist students through a 14-day quarantine, for example, but also through the social distancing efforts that they're putting in place right now. Um, it is something that they need to be aware about if you do plan on arriving late. Uh, I can't speak on their behalf and say that um, they will for sure hold your room. If you have made the deposits, I would imagine so. Uh, but again, I, I certainly encourage you to connect directly with our residence team um, and ask them these sorts of questions. Um, I can certainly, in my role of arranging these webinars, I can see if residents might be able to join us for another one in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but for now, if you want to connect with them offline, I certainly encourage you to do that. So the next question I have, um, hi, I was wondering if the fall semester will be completely online. Do I need to travel or not? I am an international student. So I will pass that one over to Robert as well. Great. Thanks, Jordan. Um, so, you know, that's, I think it's, a, it's an interesting question. Is it completely online? Um, so what Lakehead has announced is that, you know, our plan is that the fall semester will be primarily online um, with, um, with also alternative modes of delivery. So I strongly encourage everyone, if you haven't done so, to follow the link that Jordan has posted on the screen that takes you to the university's coronavirus update page. It's right off our main website. And we have, uh, as Jordan mentioned uh, at the start of today's session, um, a whole series of new FAQs uh, that speak directly to this fall and what you can anticipate um, as a student starting. So there will be predominantly courses available online. So we are not anticipating um, a traditional sort of startup to the fall in terms of people sitting in their classrooms and attending their classes like normal. Now, which courses will be available online or in which alternative formats, that is still being finalized. So what we know is we have an institute commitment that the that will be primarily online so we anticipate the majority of our courses will be offered online in what format that looks like how those courses will be delivered that is to be announced within the next two weeks I believe we should see that if not a little bit sooner um, as part of the course registration process opening up the university will be announcing the format of each of those courses so that you as a student when it comes time to register for your classes you will know when you're registering what format Format that course is going to take. So that is a commitment that the university made a number of weeks ago as part of our planning for this fall. And so that is what we are anticipating to be announced as part of the class schedule timetable. So at that time, you will then get a sense of what courses are available and what courses will fit into your particular circumstances. So, you know, if, for instance, if you're um, connecting to us from only four or five hours away in terms of time differences, um, perhaps the ability to take a course that we call is synchronous. So as you're taking that class at the exact same time as people that are locally here in Canada, um, then that may not be too bad because of the time change is not too dramatic and you'll be able to attend class at the exact same time. However, we have some students that are nine and a half, 12 hours difference in terms of the time zone. And so for those students, um, a popular option is what we call asynchronous learning. And what that means is your lectures, your courses, those materials are all available online for you and you will still connect with your fellow students and such. But rather than you having to be up at, let's say, 2 a.m. in the morning attending class, um, the asynchronous model allows you to take that course and to engage with that material in a time frame that's reasonable for you. So you can still study during the day when people are back home in Canada sleeping and vice versa, right? So, um, so there are a number of models that will be coming out. And again, you will have the opportunity to review your classes prior to registering so that you understand what type of course you're going to be engaging in. And uh, the enrollment services team at the university who helps students with registration they will be prepared to assist students who have questions and to help clarify if you have any issues with that. And, and I know there'll be more information being released as well. 
the one piece of advice I encourage everyone as you are preparing to register and you're starting to, uh, you know, get ready for this fall, um, um, for all of the applicants that are that are joining us right now, uh, make sure you're checking your Lakehead University email account, so your personal Lakehead email. Um, about a week and a half ago, an announcement was sent out that um, was promoting the new online orientation that's going to be starting over the coming weeks. So orientation is going to be delivered uh, virtually at a distance online. Um, there will be a series of modules to complete, and they will be explaining and, and actually teaching you about how to learn online, what your experience is going to be like. So the university is really doing everything it can to, to prepare you and make sure that you feel confident that this fall, when you start your program online, that you will be able to do that successfully. And we're putting the resources in place and the supports to make sure that you can do that um, you know, to your best ability as well. So again, Yes, predominantly, we will be online for sure. Um, there may be opportunity for, um, you know, for, uh, for some limited in-class experiences, ideally around like laboratories and things like that. So we have some students in programs that need to do research and things like that. And as we work through what that might look like and how we can provide some limited access to labs, things of like that, those things are all being worked out this summer. So the question though also was, do I need to travel or not? And so the, the answer to that is you do not need to travel. That is not the anticipation right now. However, we know that there are a lot of students who still would like to come to Canada this fall. And you can absolutely come to Lakehead this fall, provided that the borders are open and you can get entry into Canada, of course. That's the caveat. Um, we don't control that, unfortunately. We're a little bit like you. We're at the mercy of the government and all those policies that are, that are at play. But you can, if you, if you can travel to Canada this fall, you are welcome to do so. Our residences will be open and we are accepting students to come and move into residence. And the university is prepared to assist you um, through any 14-day uh, self-isolation. We will have the ability for you to do that on campus with us um, and to make sure that you're very well taken care of. You know, Lakehead is all about taking care of our students and we, we continue to, to operate with that same framework as we go forward. So um, we have some students who really are passionate about coming to Canada this fall and even if they're taking their courses online they would like to actually do that in Canada so that is definitely an option for you this fall again all depending on you know what the state of the border will be what will be the state in terms of being able to enter Canada so we're really hopeful you know things are looking positive in Canada um, even in our province of Ontario on Friday of this week we will be moving into stage two of reopening so you know we're already through stage one now we're heading into stage two so we are seeing an improvement happening in Canada our economies are reopening, you know, things are starting to relax and stuff. So, you know, we still got a few months to go before the fall semester and we're, we're optimistic that we'll be in a positive position by then. Awesome, thank you so much, Robert. So the next question I have is from a student who recently received a deferral into the Masters of Science of Computer Science program for winter 2021. Um, and they would like to know a bit more details about what that intake is going to look like. Um, they said that there's not too much information online. Uh, so this is the first time that actually computer science at the master's level is offering that winter intake. Um, unfortunately, as a panel of admissions and international, um, I can't speak to uh, the specific offerings of this upcoming winter intake for that program. However, I certainly encourage you to connect directly with the Department of Computer Science and ask them that that's those sorts of questions. I do imagine that, like Robert mentioned, when the course timetable does come out in a few weeks here and we do get clarity on the delivery method for courses for this upcoming fall. Um, that will also allow for our Department of Computer Science and all of our departments and faculties to then also begin uh, their planning process for the winter intake and winter in general. Um, so if they, if they can't necessarily answer your question right away, I know uh, I want to assure you that it is something that they're looking into already um, and they're, they're taking it very seriously in their planning phase so that they are confident in the delivery of the winter semester. So once again, um, for this student, you can connect directly with the Department of Computer Science. 
And uh, Jordan, I just want to add one thing. I think also, ev you know, everyone needs to be reasonable right now in terms of their questions and, 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 and a reasonable expectation about a response for winter term. You have to imagine that right now, the entire university, our, our focus is on fall 2020 and making sure that all courses are prepared, are in the right position. And so right now, if, if you have chosen as a student to defer your start to January for whatever reason you've made that choice, um, as you know, our message has been to encourage everyone to start this fall. So that is absolutely our advice is for you to start this fall. We are confident that you will have a positive start to this fall. But if you have chosen to defer to winter, um, you may not be able to get all that clarity right now because the reality is things have to happen in succession so you have to give us a little bit of time to make sure that we have everything ready for this fall and then naturally we will start to work on uh, the winter semester so I just want to make sure that everyone is very reasonable and, and understanding that you know everyone is working very hard to figure these things out we are in very unprecedented times you know these are the kinds of things that um, you know many of us you know even five six months ago would never have imagined we'd be in this position right now but but the good thing is, is that the university is doing quite well. We are addressing these things. Um, you know, we recently, just a few months ago, everything was on focus on the spring semester, right? And so we were getting lots of questions about the fall. And at that time, we weren't able to answer a lot of those questions because we were really focused on spring. Well, now we're focusing on fall and we will get to winter. So just to make sure that everyone remembers um, that if you rush off and email the, the Department of Computer Science today after our, our, our wonderful information session, um, you may not get a lot of answers today but I certainly expect that in the coming weeks there will be more information that will come out and the department I have to say has been really good at reaching out to students communicating with them like within computer science and so you know you just you do have to be a little bit patient and understand that that is coming in time awesome thank you so much Robert so the next question is actually I'll get both undergraduate and graduate studies to answer this um, the next question is, if I want to start my course for the January session or winter 2021, um, what sort of time frame is there to ask the university or request that deferral? So we'll start off with Natalie in undergraduate admissions and then Sharice in graduate can follow up. Great, thank you so much for this question. So at the undergraduate level, most of our programs are eligible for a winter start date except for our nursing program. So, um, and sorry, our nursing program or our Lakehead Georgian partnership programs. So if you are an undergraduate applicant, your offer will be valid for both the fall 2020 and the winter 2021 semester. If you are planning to start in the winter 2021 semester, we do just ask that you send us an email. So then we will flag your file uh, so that we do receive notice that that is your intention to start in the winter. However, you do not need a new letter of acceptance um, and all the dates on your current letter of acceptance still apply. You are still required to accept your offer and meet the conditions. So if you are an undergraduate application, applicant, we do just encourage you to continue to, to, to follow the same process as you would be starting in the fall. However, send us an email uh, notifying us that winter will be your start date and we will flag your like your file that way. Awesome, thank you so much, Natalie. And I still pass it over to Sharice in graduate studies. Hi, so the graduate deferral process is a little bit different. We have a date of June 28th that you need to let us know that you wish to defer to the winter term. Not all programs have a winter intake, so the best thing for you to do is to email us at the G student email address on the bottom of uh, the screen. Just email us, let us know your uh, name, your Lakehead ID number, and you can just say, you know, I'm interested in starting in the winter. Can I, you know, can I change my um, offer to winter? We, if, if it's possible, because the program is accepting winter applicants, then what we'll do is give you a new offer of admission to that winter start term. Awesome, thank you so much, Therese. So the next question I have is for Natalie in undergraduate admissions. The question is, I started an undergraduate studies program in my home country this year. Um, because of the pandemic, I was only able to complete two weeks of classes. Uh, will they need to apply as a transfer student when applying to Lakehead University at the undergraduate level? 
Hi, thank you so much for your question. So it really does depend on the transcript that your university um, has provided you with. Uh, if after those two weeks you did drop from those classes and you do not have an academic record at that university, uh, you would not be required to apply as a transfer student. However, though, if you do have an official transcript um, from that university and there is some type of grade or note on those courses that you took, we would need to see that. So what I would encourage you to do, if you can send me an email, um, that would be great. I would be more than happy to have a look and look into your situation. So the email address is intl.admission at lakehead.ca that Jordan has on the main screen over here. And if you do have any documentation that you can attach in your email, uh, I can, can have a look at that. Let me know what program you're interested in and we can go from there. Thank you so much. Nice. Jordan, I'd like to just jump in one thing, just as a reminder um, for, for Beatrice, um, just so you know as well, um, as an, for an, as an international student applying to Lakehead, um, whether you are applying direct out of your high school or even if you are, depending on, obviously Natalie's going to help assess your, your situation, even if you were a transfer student, the one thing I want to remind you is at Lakehead, we will award our entrance scholarships to undergraduate students for both um, students who have come in directly from high school or even if you are a transfer student. So in either case, you would still be eligible for consideration for one of our um, undergraduate entrance scholarships. I just want to, as a little promotion to let you know and to, uh, to remind you that your eligibility would still remain in that case and so we strongly encourage you to follow up with that. Thank you so much for adding that. I know that's a, it's a popular question we receive about scholarships um, and that clarity obviously will uh, hopefully help the student make their decision. So the next question we have is, when are we going to receive emails concerning course registration? I've already signed up for FastPass. So typically in my experience, I'm actually a graduate of the university um, a, a couple of years back and I did the undergraduate business program. Um, students in the undergraduate studies will typically receive an email regarding course registration um, leading up to the, the date that you will be asked to register. So it's typically a week out or so. Um, so what you can expect if you're a first year uh, incoming student, uh, your course registration is going to open at the end of this month. And then course registration will continue to open to other students in the beginning of July. Um, so you should receive that email in the coming weeks uh, with more information. I'm happy to hear that you've signed up for FastPass though because Enrollment Services, the team that manages course registration of course, um, hosts really great sessions and can actually help walk you through that, that registration process and also be there to answer questions throughout the entire session. Um, if you are in graduate studies, I know that course registration is uh, a quite different process and that typically happens in mid-July. Um, if you have any questions with regards to that, of course, once the, the, those communication pieces start going out, I encourage you to then reach out and ask those sorts of questions. Jordan, I'll also just add some specific dates for um, the, that question. So it's great that you've signed up for FastPass as they'll be able to help you through the, the registration process. The timetable will be released for undergraduate applicants, uh, undergraduate students on the 18th, June 18th, and registration for first year students will open on the 20th. So if you've registered for FastPass before the 20th, that's great so that right on the 20th, you can register for your courses uh, and get first pick. Awesome, thank you so much. And it, it sounds like obviously there's a natural uh, short period in there for students to start planning out the courses that they're going to be interested in taking. So on the 18th, when that, once that timetable is released, I certainly encourage any of our viewers and undergraduate studies to head over to that timetable and actually look into which courses are being offered, look into maybe a preferred time session, preferred professor, all that sort of stuff. So the next question I have is going to be uh, for Robert. Um, it is with regards to a student who has already applied for their visa, um, but unfortunately, of course, in many countries, the visa offices are still closed. Um, and that their, their concern is whether they can start online, of course, without that visa, but with regards to the postgraduate work permit um, and having that, they want to know if they can defer their application. 
Great, thanks so much, Jordan. So Dimash, um, thank you so much for your question. Um, so I think there's a couple of things to sort of talk about. Uh, I wanna unpack your question a little bit because you've you've mentioned about the fact that there are visa application centers that are closed and that is absolutely correct. Um, and then you've also asked about the question about deferral. So let's sort of separate those two, those couple of things. So uh, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the Canadian government did announce some new updates with regards to visa processing. Um, and one of those updates was that they are allowing students to submit incomplete visa applications. So whereas in the past, the expectation was that you would sort of complete your package of documents and all the things that were required and submit that, the government is now willing to accept incomplete applications, recognizing that there are going to be elements of the application that you simply just cannot do right now because of the fact that certain things are closed. Applying for a visa is done online and those applications have not closed. So you can continue to apply online for a visa. You have always been able to do that, but you can absolutely continue to do that. So if you've not yet started your visa application, you should be doing that right now. And then what the government has said is that they will allow you to submit um, sort of a letter or an explanation that will explain what are the elements that you're not able to get done. So if it's you can't come in and do your biometrics or you can't get in to get that medical examination done, whatever the case might be, you can explain and provide those details as part of your application. But the government has publicly stated, it's on their website, um, that again, that they will accept incomplete applications. Now, we don't know, they haven't stated how they're handling those or whether or not they will give um, preliminary decisions. That's still, I think, to be figured out over the coming weeks as we head towards September. But you have to imagine, you know, Devanch, that you are not alone. There are hundreds of thousands of people around the world that are in the exact same position as you right now. And so we know that the government is addressing this, they are looking into this, and they are trying to find a way to reasonably, you know, handle this unique situation that we're all in. So what I would say is, Definitely apply if you haven't done so yet. You are absolutely able to submit an incomplete application to the government with a supporting document that, that explains your particular circumstance. So what is it that is preventing you from, from completing your application? Um, Again, you know, the government, they're people, you know, we all understand the situations you're in. Um, they're also people themselves, so they know the challenges that you're facing. And as I'm sure you've come to know, Canada is a pretty reasonable country in terms of, you know, how we support students and how we work with them. So again, you can still do that. So definitely get your visa in. Now, in terms of can you defer your application uh, to the university? Absolutely. So for many of our programs, there is an opportunity to request a deferral, and there are different processes depending depending on if you are applying to an undergraduate or a graduate program. So for those of you that already have an undergraduate offer of admission for the fall of 2020, um, you can, uh, it also includes winter 2021. So for almost all of our programs in undergrad, that is the case. So you can simply um, choose to start in January instead of uh, September. Um, as a general rule of thumb, I always think it's good to sort of keep people informed. So if you wanna give Natalie a heads up through the email to sort of let her know that my, if your plan is to to start in the winter instead of the fall. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, for the graduate program, so you do have to request a deferral. That absolutely has to be done. Um, and so I don't know if Natalie or, or Sharice want to speak any more specifically about those processes. I welcome it to open up uh, to them, but it is an option that you have available for you. You know, we, we recently just covered this question, actually, Robert. So Natalie did clarify. Okay, um, great. A final reminder and adding on to your point is the fact that, of course, any of the dates or deadlines stated in the offer um, need to be met either way, um, even if you do plan on uh, arriving this winter. And then, like Natalie mentioned, just connecting directly with the international admissions team and letting them know uh, so that their file can be flagged. And then, Sharice, you also clarified that um, for graduate students, if you are looking to request that deferral, there is a deadline, and I'm sorry, it's June something. Um, I'll let you add that date. It's June 28th. Okay, thank you, you fall, so much. Yeah, if you have a fall offer, you need to let us know by June 28th. If you're going to be changing to the winter, we do encourage you to start in the fall. As Robert was previously talking about, we'll, we'll have everything set up for you to start at that point if you can. Awesome. And, you know, as a general rule of thumb, like I say to, to every applicant and family members that I meet over the years, 
we can't read your mind. You know, when we sit in Canada in our offices, we don't know what's going on in your mind. And so if you've maybe made a decision in your mind, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to choose to start in January, you have to reach out to us. We, you cannot assume anything. Do not assume that we're just going to hold a seat for you and you'll be able to show up in November and all of a sudden that seat will still be there. Especially for a lot of our competitive programs, like our graduate programs, we have many, many more applications than we have seats available. And so if you don't tell us what your plan is, we're going to assume actually that you don't want that spot because we're going to think, oh, well, I guess they're not interested in us anymore. So we're going to move on to the next student who's sitting there going, I really want that spot. I'm going to commit today. Um, so it's really important that, you know, you follow those deadlines and you let us know what's going on and you tell us what's happening. You pay your deposits so that you can secure your spot. You know, a deferral is not just like, well, I think about it. Maybe I'll come in the winter. Just go ahead and hold that for me. No, you got to be willing to put down some money, hold your spot, make a commitment. That's important. So, so just remember to follow all those things uh, to protect you. Know, and then you're, you'll be secure and protected and you'll know that you have that seat waiting for you um, for the next semester. Robert, we also received a follow-up from the same student uh, just adding on to their question um, and they would like to know if they complete their first semester online after completing that one semester online are they eligible to travel to Canada provided of course they have the study permit so could you just clarify um, kind of the expectations or when students are allowed to travel to Canada? Jordan, we really, we don't know at this point, right? This is one of those things that we have no idea. And so um, I think everyone right now, I mean, here's, here's the one thing I want to say, you know, we, I want to make sure everyone understands, we fully recognize that, you know, all of you as applicants are in a really difficult situation, right? Um, you're, you're, you're being asked to make decisions and choices where you may not have all of the answers when you go to make that decision and choice. And that's a, that's a difficult position to be in, right? I mean, even for all of us who we're, we're the kind of people where normally our world is about giving you answers, right? Is helping to clarify things. And there are just sometimes things that right now we don't have the answers to. And, and we're trying to find them out and we're trying to, you you know, advocate to, to get you the, the answers you need to make the best choice for yourself. But I just want to make sure everyone understands, we fully recognize that you're, you're being asked to make some choices with maybe not total clarity or, or certainty. And I mean, that part of that is life. You know, life is often like that, where we, we sometimes have to make decisions with limited information, or we don't feel like we maybe have everything we wish we had. Um, so that is part of this uh, for sure. And certainly with the, the, the situation we're facing right now, it, it, is, uh, it, is a, it is a difficult time. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, as soon as we know anything, we will be sharing that. So that's one thing that we've made as a commitment as an international enrollment office. So if there is an announcement that it relates to borders being open or the ability for more travel to happen or, you know, things changing, all of that, we will for sure communicate that. So even if you're, you're somewhere else in the world and you don't get maybe a lot of Canadian media and you're worried that you're going to miss something, do not worry, we are going to keep you informed to the best of our ability, and we will send out those announcements and we will help keep you informed. Um, we will be updating those FAQs regularly, um, like we, we, we did a few weeks ago, and we'll send out reminders about this. So last week when we sent out our weekly communication, we talked about fall opening. We had, we had information about those changes to the, the visa process and postgraduate work permit. So we include those stories. The key thing is you need to be staying tuned in, right? You've got to be checking your Lakehead email. You've got to be, you know, attending our weekly, our weekly sessions like this one and others that Jordan hosts every day. Every weekday, Lakehead International is live. We're available. We're, we're coming, beaming into your homes, and we're making sure that we're, we're able to answer your questions to the best of our ability and bringing you the latest updates as they come available. So, we don't have an answer. I've got to be upfront. We just don't. But we, we're seeing positive trends and we're hoping that that will continue and we'll continue to be on that, that positive track right now. We know for sure, and what the government announced, this is a couple of months ago now, anyone who had a study permit or had been approved for a study permit prior to March 13th, I believe is the date, 13th or 12th, they would be exempt from any restrictions to entering Canada. So we know if you have a study permit prior to March 12th or had been approved prior to March 12th, 
then you can come to Canada. There's no issue right now. That is the rule. The question is for anyone who gets a study permit after that date or approval for a study permit, that is the group right now that can't currently enter Canada. So we're hoping to get clarity on that over the coming weeks. And again, you know, it's one of those things where it's still early June, a couple of months still to go, you know, and we're hoping that as things continue to improve in Canada, we will see some, some hopefully some changes and, and the ability to open up through there. So again, I wish I had an answer for you, but we just don't. Um, and, and you're going to have to make some choices based on the best information you've got today and what sort of fits your particular um, circumstances. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert. And I obviously, I, I want to echo something that you mentioned and I was going to bring it up myself is um, we, we are communicating these regular updates and we're, we're trying to keep all of our applicants, all of our future students informed. Um, but the, there's uh, two sides to the road here. Of course, we are providing that information, but it's important that you're also regularly checking your emails. And that's where I always say, stay connected with us on social media. Some of the more major announcements are some of the regular posts that I'm putting out as well. Um, and so it's really important that um, I have an audience there to receive those sorts of messages. And that's kind of where, where you're monitoring and you're staying updated on your end as well, because um, unfortunately, obviously, we can't fly to your house. We can't come knocking on your door to say, here's the latest news. We can do that by email. We can do that by social media. But you have to uh, be there with us to answer that call. So the next question I have is for Natalie in undergraduate admissions. Um, the student said that they one of the conditions for their acceptance letter is to submit high school diplomas, which in their country will not be available until August. So uh, they would just like some clarity along that. Great, thank you so much for your questions. So we do understand and recognize that many um, examinations have been delayed across the world uh, for final examination results and issuance of high school diplomas. So undergraduate admissions will absolutely remain flexible with that deadline date on your offer. If you don't have the document yet, you can't provide it to us. And so we definitely, uh, understand and recognize that. Um, what I would encourage you to do is, even though it won't be issued until August, you can still prepare to send that to us in August. So for example, we are accepting email documents. So if you are, let's say in India and you are doing a board, for example, the CBSE board or another board where verification can be done online, once you do receive your results, you can email us your results along with the verification information. We will go online and verifi verify those results, uh, and that will be your final official high school transcript and diploma. So that's just something that you can think about, think ahead, uh, so that you can prepare to provide us with that final official transcript once it is issued to you in August. Awesome. Thank you so much, Natalie. Um, before we move on to the next question, something I just wanted to clarify behind the scenes, pulled up the details directly from the Canadian uh, government's website. And for students who have already received their valid study permit um, up to March 18th, 2020, those students are the, the ones that will be eligible to travel and make their way to Canada. Um, I know we weren't exactly sure on the date, so I just want to clarify it is March 18th. Um, and then like Robert mentioned, unfortunately, we don't, we don't have the answers just yet for anyone who's received study permits after that date. Um, but of course, once again, we are advocating with the federal government and making sure that uh, hopefully the best outcome is, is put in place by them. And the next question that we have is another visa related question. Um, I'll pass this one off to Robert and I wanted to answer. It's related to a student who would like to pay um, the, the last stage of their visa application is paying part of their tuition or paying their tuition for the year. Um, and they would like to know if it's recommended that they do that, um, if they continue the application or if it's recommended that they hold off their application until they pay that tuition. Um, and I know that's more related to the SDS stream. So I'll pass it over to Robert. Great, thanks Jordan. Um, so my understanding, and, and, and I mean, I haven't heard directly from the government on this, so, so this would be my sort of opinion on this. Um, you know, there are real barriers 
to submitting your visa application. So for instance, if, a, if you cannot access a medical clinic for your medical examination, or you cannot attend in person to provide your biometrics, those are real barriers to, uh, to completing your application. If you have simply not completed a step of your application, like pay your tuition, that is not a real barrier. That is a choice that is being made because the university is absolutely able to receive your tuition payment. Students are paying their tuition every day. So there is the, the only thing that would be preventing you from paying your tuition would be you not paying your tuition, right? There's not, there isn't an actual barrier that is preventing you from doing that. And so I would encourage that you should not be submitting incomplete applications unless the items that are incomplete are because of real barriers. And, you know, just knowing the visa officers that I know and, and some of the work that they do, in my understanding, you know, they're going to be able to accommodate and, and take into consideration the things that are out of the control of a student. But not paying your tuition or delaying the payment of your tuition, that is something that is in control of the student. So therefore, my recommendation would be would not to submit an application that for which you have not, um, you know, satisfied the criteria that you can satisfy. And um, now recognizing there may be situations where perhaps you're struggling to make that visa payment or there may be other things that are happening, um, but you have to think about, you know, how is the visa officer going to look at this? Is, the, is something missing from my application something that I could be doing and I could be, you know, fulfilling? And, if, and I, I suspect, you know, if I had to use my best professional judgment, that if you were missing things that, um, that you were able to complete and you did have the opportunity to complete, that perhaps that wouldn't be favorable for you. But if there are items missing that you have no control over and you cannot control, then that's probably the situation that is most likely going to be sort of taken into consideration. So my advice would be, would be to endeavor to do the best you can to get that tuition paid. Um, again, the university has been receiving tuition payments all along and we can, we can receive that there. We can issue you your receipts. Jordan mentioned a while ago, Chris Gallinger is absolutely providing receipts to students. So, um, so you can for sure fulfill those criteria. So just make sure that when you submit your visa, anything that's missing are real barriers to completion, you know, and I think that that's probably the best uh, way to, to go forward with that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert. And I just want to know the time right now. So it is 10.50 a.m. in uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario. Um, so we do have 10 minutes left of today's webinar. So if you do have any more questions for us, whether you're joining us on Zoom, you can certainly submit your questions via the Q&A function. If you're over on um, our Facebook live stream, you can always comment on that video. And we do have Lake and experts behind the scenes helping to answer questions. And last but not least, if you're watching this as a recording, whether it be on our YouTube or on our Facebook, you can always comment on that video um, and we will receive notifications as the admins to those pages and we will certainly follow up with the questions or the, pardon me the answers to your questions. Moving on though the next question I'll, I'll get both undergraduate and graduate to answer this one it is with regards to submitting final transcripts uh, online or must they be sent directly as a hard copy to Lakehead so I'll, I'll pass it over to Natalie to speak to the new processes that we've implemented for that. Absolutely. So it really just depends on your school or the body of examinations that you have written. Um, if your results can be verified online or your school can email us a copy of your transcript directly from a school emailed address, for example, at lakeheadu.ca, that's Lakehead's official email address. So at stmary's.com or, or wherever uh, your school is located. So if your school can email those to us from a school issued email address or your results can be verified online, they do not need to be sent through the mail as a hard copy. However, the, if this is something that your school is not able to do, then we will require the hard copy to be sent in the mail from your institution. We are still accepting mail. Um, our mail is getting picked up and processed once a week right now, and we are still getting a, a steady flow of mail from all around the world uh, and so if this is the only option for you it is still something that we are processing and similar to what natalie has just outlined graduate studies will require 
the same sort of uh, documentation. So for now, if you cannot get us your final documents, but you have completed your degree, we would give you an unconditional letter so that you can, you know, have no problem with your visa process. We would require the official hard copies by November 1st. So if this is your situation, you're welcome to email us at gstudent at lakehedu.ca and we can just reiterate that. It's also listed in the FAQs under the link at the bottom to the coronavirus page. Awesome. Thank you both Natalie and Sharice for answering that question. So right now we don't have any open questions in the Q&A. Um, I'll flip over to check to see if we have any over on Facebook Live. Looks like we don't have any on there. So uh, thank you again for asking so many questions. We're still online for a few minutes here. Um, in the meantime, I'll take this opportunity to kind of chat about uh, some of the social medias that we have and how we're staying connected and how we're staying active with our audience members. Um, so we're over on Facebook, Lakehead University International. Um, I specifically want to take a moment to chat about a group that we've started on that Facebook page. It's called the Incoming Class of 2020. So that group actually represents students that will be joining us in the upcoming term, um, whether they're starting this spring or summer, pardon me, or whether they'll be joining us this fall. Um, they are grouped into that same Incoming Class of 2020. Um, great conversations are already happening over there. People are meeting potential roommates. People are meeting future classmates. They're also meeting people even from their home country. So they're establishing friendships uh, that I, I'm sure and I've heard from other students uh, will help in that process of kind of getting back to campus or, or joining Lakehead. They'll already have friends that they've met online. Um, speaking a bit more to that actually is the fact that um, I'm, I recently met up with um, a, a student on our Instagram live and I chatted about this exact page and so they were a part of that friend group or the, that Facebook group and they had started meeting people online and they established a friend group of five or six folks from India and so they all started communicating in their own private WhatsApp group chat and they made this really tight-knit group um, and then they joined the peer mentor program which is run out of our international student services office um, and then now now it's been three years in that same group that met online virtually um, are in person, of course, and they're still best friends, even roommates uh, for a couple of them. So it's really great to see that the, the power of online and the, the connections that you can still have in that virtual setting um, and, and the conversations that I've seen going on there is really interesting. And I'm, I'm very happy to help monitor it and help guide that conversation too. Um, we're also on Instagram, so uh, our, our username is Lake It International. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we go live at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and I meet up with a current student. Tomorrow, I will be meeting up with Vishwa. She is a student from India, and she's currently studying the HBCOM here at Lake It's the business program, the undergraduate business program. Um, and we're going to dive into her experience of living off campus. We're going to dive into her, her involvement in Enactus as the vice president of the group or the club. Um, and I'm really excited to have that conversation with her. I did notice that I, I had a question pop up, so just give me one second to head over there and check it out. So the question is, if I have not received my student visa yet and the current situation does not allow me to enter Canada, will I be pursuing online classes till then? So um, I'll pass this one over to Robert to speak to that. And again, I'll get him to reiterate sort of the delivery method for this upcoming fall. So thanks, Jordan. So yeah, so I mean, basically, if you can't come to Canada um, and we're offering courses online, you're welcome to start your program online with us. So absolutely, that is uh, what's going to be happening. So continue to follow your Lakehead email for the latest updates about your classes and registrations and what courses will be available. Um, it's important to know, though, that um, when once, you know, the um, things continue to settle down and, and we're able to move back into an in-person delivery mode, the university has every expectation that we will be going back to in-person, in-class delivery. And so students will be expected then to come to Canada to continue their studies. So I just want to make sure it's crystal clear that, you know, being starting to deliver programs this fall online is a temporary measure to respond to the current global pandemic. But once things start to settle down, 
down and we are able to resume in-person classes um, and that happens, we will, we do anticipate that, you know, at that time, students will be required to come. So it is important that you understand that you, these, every student who starts with us still has, you know, the obligation to get a visa um, ultimately. And um, that, of course, is both for your postgraduate work permit, if you're planning to apply for that after you graduate. Um, but in terms of the ability to come to Canada, you will have to have a study permit to come to Canada and permission to enter. And so I just remind students that just because you start studying online does not mean that you'll necessarily be able to complete your entire program online. That is not the, the intention right now. This is a temporary time. We are going to ensure that students can continue with their dreams and their education goals um, to address the, the current pandemic. Pandemic. But once things settle down and we're getting back to normal, we expect to move back into in-class like we would normally have delivered. So just be mindful of that. You still have an obligation to ultimately get a visa to be able to come to Canada to complete your studies. And we do have one last question and then I will have to cut the questions at that point just given the time that we are uh, coming to the end of the hour. Um, it is another visa related question and it's I'm, I'm surprised I don't know the answer to this myself, but I'll pass this over to Robert. Um, the student, the international student has received their letter of acceptance um, and it is for a degree with the cooperative education option. Um, and they would like to know, do they need to apply for both a work visa and a study visa? So students will have to acquire the appropriate work credentials to be able to have permission to work in Canada. Um, in terms of like the, the, the full-time work that involves a co-op, um, but they don't need to apply for that piece until they're about to take a co-op. And so we have an international immigration advisor. Her name is Jennifer Kaplanis, and she is a member of the um, international staff. So she's part of our team. She is certified to be able to provide consultation and support relating to those visa applications. So when you are in a co-op program, you initially are just starting as a regular academic student. So you would apply to be eligible to complete co-op work terms once you're a student studying in the program. So once you're already here, then you would start to get ready to potentially take a work term. Um, but that doesn't happen right away. So your obligation right now for your program is to get that study permit to be able to come to Canada and start your academic studies. And then when it comes time to doing a co-op, if you need any additional permissions, um, you will be able to receive that and Jennifer will be able to support you. So you don't have to worry about that today. The big thing right now is focusing on your academic study permit. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert. And um, I will just wrap up my, my brief follow us, connect with us on social media. Um, we're also on Twitter, Lake at INTL. Um, so you can head over there and follow us. We're on YouTube, Lakehead University. We do have two playlists dedicated to our international students. So one is Lakehead International. You can learn more about the university. You can hear from our students via testimonials, all that sort of stuff. Um, we also have the Lakehead International Lives playlist, which is where all of our recordings go. Um, so after today's event, in a few short hours, our uh, videographer will upload this video to our YouTube channel and you can re-watch it. So if you maybe missed part of it, you had to head out early, if you want to hear an answer one more time, you can certainly head over there. Um, for the past two months now that we've been doing this, over two months actually, um, all of those videos are online as well. Um, and for those students that maybe want to hear from other students uh, and hear about their experiences, you can head over to our IGTV, again, via the Lakehead International uh, Instagram account. And our IGTV has some of our more recent uh, live events with our students. Last but not least, uh, I know a really important part of the decision process is uh, checking out the campus and making sure that it's somewhere that you're you're going to be interested in pursuing and studying at. Um, I think if you take a virtual tour and you get to see our facilities, you get to see the, the beauty of our campus, the natural surrounding environment, um, you also might be sold on it as well. So if you head over to lakehead.ca forward slash tours, you can take that virtual campus tour at any time of Guelph Thunder Bay or Aurelia. Um, it's it, no appointment necessary and it's done at your own pace, so I certainly encourage you to do that. Whether you need to start it today and wrap it up tomorrow, that's totally your prerogative. Um, other than that, I want to thank everyone for joining us and thank you again to our panelists. Uh, I've said this a couple times now. Um, I, I, I can't even, I've lost count of how many times we've joined up and answered so many questions on Wednesdays. Um, it's something that we're always happy to do and like Robert mentioned earlier, echoing again that um, that's what we're here for. We're, we're typically used to answering these sorts of questions and we're, we're always excited to answer questions. Um, and so as more details come out from the university and you join up again next week and the following week, 
uh, please let us know if you have any questions and uh, we're happy to stay connected. Otherwise, I'll wrap it up here today. Um, and thank you again for joining us. Hopefully we'll see you either tomorrow on Instagram Live or later on this week for the Mathematical Sciences Faculty Friday. All right, bye for now.